everybody welcome back to my channel in today's video i want to have a little style chat about some of my top style icons this is a video idea that i was tagged in recently by my friend here on youtube the chic chanteuse and i thought it was the greatest idea because i love talking about style icons i think that it's such a fun thing that we're all exposed to whether consciously or subconsciously and different style icons in our consciousness influence our style in different ways and when you really start to break them down and dissect how they've influenced you and then the different times in your life that they were particularly relevant and then how that still holds true in your style today i think it's so fun so i'm really excited to share that with you today so let's get started i have to start off with probably my top personal style icon and also who i was named after and that is audrey hepburn i think i mentioned this in a past video but allegedly when i was born my parents said i came out looking like I had a fresh pixie cut and so it reminded them of Audrey and my mom said there was just something there that reminded her of Audrey Hepburn so they named me Audrey and I've always really loved it because I like my name separate from Audrey but also the fact that it is tied to her has greatly influenced my style over the years and the more that I'm learning about body geometry and all of that fun stuff that I've been exploring on my channel the more I understand why. And even though it might not seem super obvious at first, we really do share a lot of those similarities and I can totally get why some things have been perfectly borrowed from her style influence into my own wardrobe and continue to be favorites of mine. So specifically things like cropped pants, shrunken cardigans, turtlenecks and big earrings and black and white. Those are all things I really love and will continue to love because it will always be Audrey Hepburn for me forever and ever and ever. The next style icon that I have to talk about and someone that has been influencing my style since before I really thought about style is Maria Callas. So as you know, I've mentioned in past videos that I'm a singer. I probably won't ever sing on this channel. Let me just say that now because it's a part of my life that I hold really dear and it's not something I think I want to share here. Um, for reasons that we won't get into. But essentially, I've been singing for as long as I can remember and taking private vocal lessons since a very, very young age. I was about nine years old when I started. And my voice coach at the time really loved Maria Callas, so she introduced her to me. And I just loved her immediately beyond just the insane talent. I was instantly struck by the dark hair because I have dark hair, the dark eyes. I love her love of eyeliner, the bold jewelry. She always felt in every picture that I saw and of course performances that I watched, she always felt so true to her and so dramatic in a really good way. And so I loved that because as I'm sure you've had experience yourself, when it comes to someone that's open fantastic performer. There's something about them internally that you can't quite put your finger on, but comes across to you as you're watching. And I found that with her just perfectly captivating. So specifically from a style perspective, it is again, the black and the white, the dark hair that creates the high contrast because she had lighter skin. Of course, the drama in what she chose to wear, the bold earrings, I just, oh, all of it, I just think is so great. And I remember being really little and thinking to myself, this must be how a good singer should dress. So I started incorporating some of those things into my personal style as I got a little bit older. I would slick my hair back the way that she did. And there are things that I still do because they just felt right. I think that as you're going through your style journey, you pick up little pieces here and there and some work, some don't. And the ones that do really stay with you for longer than a couple of years. And I find so much of that from her. Next is Penelope Cruz. And I mentioned in another video that she is my celebrity skin twin. So essentially I recommend finding a celebrity that has basically your exact coloring, and then using the experts at their disposal to help influence your own wardrobe. So the hairstylist, the makeup artist, and the wardrobe stylist, and that can point you in the right direction. So she has been that for me a lot over the years, and we have almost the exact same coloring, 
Plus, she reminds me kind of of my mom. There's something about her that reminds me of my mom in the essence and of course the coloring and everything. So a lot of that stuff has always worked for me. And I also love that she's an April baby as a side, side note, plus she's a Taurus, just like I am. So over the years, I've really been influenced by how she's been dressed specifically for any Chanel presentation. I love the color contrast. I love the navy and the black and the white. I also love that things are tailored, but not too tailored. They're fun, they're not too serious ever, and just so beautiful. So again, so much of that has influenced me and will likely continue to influence me over the years. And then I also wanted to mention, I remember when I was younger, I saw this image. It was probably in a magazine, but I now know that it's like all over Pinterest. And it was this picture of her. She had tousled hair, really rosy cheeks, um, no eye makeup, bold eyebrows, and a light t-shirt, I think. And I loved that so much. And I started doing that with my own makeup and my own hair. And it worked so well for me. I think that's what kind of kicked it off that I could look to her for representation. And I remember I loved it specifically because I was living in Florida and it's so hot <laughs> and you sweat so much that your makeup falls off anyway. And so that kind of low key look really, really worked. And it's something that I still do and will continue to do. So I really admire her for her style and she will definitely continue to influence me over the years. I'm sure of it. Another one of my top style icons and also another April baby is Selena. So I didn't discover Selena until sadly after she passed away because I was too little. I was way too young when she died, but my aunt introduced me to her and I loved her immediately like so many of you. Not only did I love her music, especially because I was singing more at the time. So I would sing along to her albums, learn all the words and everything. And I also just loved how she always looked so happy. She had that huge, beautiful smile, the big dark hair in the loose waves that influenced me to wear my hair like that for a good chunk of my young life and young adulthood. And then also, I just really loved so many of the things that I've noticed throughout all of these style icons, the black and the white, the jeans that I wear, that light wash jean with the white shirt, no doubt started to be influenced because of my exposure to Selena. And I just think that there was something so wonderful about her style because it felt so perfect for her and it always felt relaxed but special and i really love that and that's something that i think i'm always chasing in my style and i love that she would take a white t-shirt or excuse me a white shirt but then pair it with a bright red lip and maybe some great hoops and those are things that at the time when you're so young you don't really notice that you're taking in but you are and especially when you see that then echoed in your aunt and your mom and other people close to you it starts to influence your style in a way that will stay with you forever so forever and ever and ever the big hoops the white shirts and so many things about Selena that I feel so lucky, like so many people to have been able to experience and continue to experience. My next style icon is someone that influences me both as a real life person and then as a fictional character. And that is Fran Drescher or Fran Fine from The Nanny. I really love Fran. I love her personality. She's so effervescent and I love that she's funny and I love that she, doesn't hold that back at all. I really love people that are always joking and laughing. And I think that there's something just so wonderful about that part of her that she embraces so well, not only in real life, but in course the character that she created. So in real life, she's so elegant and so much of what she chooses to wear on the red carpet and in interviews and everything is so beautifully suited to her. And you can tell that she has a real love of fashion and that translated into the character that she created. So obviously the character is a caricature and it's over the top and she's got the bright colors, the really, really short skirts and everything to amplify the character but it still feels right. And I think that's because she taps into both sides of her personality. And it's something that I'm loving as I get more in tune with my own personal style because certain things can highlight certain parts about us and knowing that and how to channel that can really help you send the message that you want. So I really admire that. Plus from a really like broken down style perspective, on the nanny, I mean, how could you not love those little turtlenecks, the little jackets, the cute little collars, 
the bright colors. I just think everything was so wonderful and especially as we look back, I think, on a television show, you can really start to see how things were influenced and then of course break down all the nuances that went into the style and especially on that show. So many of those suits were made specifically for her. I just, you can tell that she has a love of fashion and I love how that crosses so many parts of her character and real life. So I love Fran. So that leads perfectly into the last couple that I want to share with you who are strictly fictional. These are movie characters that have influenced my style, some really tangible and some a little bit more abstract. And the first has to be Barbara Streisand's character in What's Up Doc. I think her name is Judy in the movie. And I love that movie. If you haven't seen it before and you like really, really cheesy humor, I think you'll like it. It's from the 70s and Barbara Streisand. I love her. So I really loved that movie from a style perspective because I think it was one of the first times as I was thinking back for this video idea that I remember noticing a small wardrobe but also being interchanged a lot. And it became really obvious to me because in the movie, her character has just a carry-on and she has to dress from that carry-on. So she repeats some of the wardrobe pieces and styles them a little bit differently. And I remember noticing that because my mom taught us to dress that way, obviously. You have a few things, you mix and match. And so it's the first time that I remember seeing it actually executed, plus coupled with the suitcase. I don't know, it just really struck me as a little girl. And I think back now, and I really loved that green tank top that she wears, because I love green. I also remember she has this like newsboy cap, but it's got a plaid pattern on it and it's got this light blue color running through it. I love that. And then really specifically, I remember there's one scene where she sings in the movie and she's got this light purple cardigan and it just suits her so beautifully. And I remember thinking the coloring of everything coupled with her voice and all of that, it's just a really memorable style moment. And like I said, even though it's more abstract and it did, it hasn't influenced literally what I like to wear, it still had a really big impact on me and my style journey. And then another fictional character that has greatly influenced my style and is a solid personal style icon is Jenny Cavallari from Love Story, Ali McGraw's character. I think everyone loves her for her style in that movie and for good reason because I think it really solidified so many things that are still part of popular fashion and things that have become wardrobe icons as a result. So of course that camel coat, but more specifically things that I still wear today. I love the turtleneck tucked into that little plaid skirt. I remember when I watched the movie for the first time with my mom, she introduced it to me and my sisters and we all watched it together and she pointed out these outfits that she loved, things that she wore. And I remember seeing, oh, she does wear that and it looks so good. So as I became more aware of style and started to choose my clothing, I undoubtedly incorporated those things. That like collegiate preppy look is something I will always love. And also that red dress that she wears, I am still, I have been on the hunt for that exact dress for so many years and I am forever looking for it because it's so beautiful. It has that perfect collar, the subtle uh, puff, but kind of like drapey sleeves that hit at the wrist, the cinched waist that's not too cinched and that floaty skirt. It's so beautiful. And then I love those big glasses. I remember wishing that I needed glasses because I love those glasses so much. And then also when she's doing the recital, because of course anything with music really stuck with me throughout the years. So that part always did. But it, during that part, She's got this dress and it's got this like white peaking collar and then these really big white cuffs. And I remember loving that so much and having a dress similar to that when I was like an early teenager and I would still wear that. So Jenny Cavallari forever and ever and ever. And if you haven't seen Love Story, get tissues and watch it because it's a must watch, but for the fashion also. Get through the tears and then appreciate the fashion and I'm sure you'll love it because it's so, so good. And last but not least is Pride and Prejudice and specifically Elizabeth and Jane or Keira Knightley and Rosamund Pike. I remember watching that movie when it first came out. I think I was in high school and I just loved it so much. I still love it. I think the soundtrack is beautiful. The scenery is gorgeous. So much about it is just so, so good. And so I specifically, from a fashion standpoint, I remember watching that movie and loving the flushed cheeks, the tousled hair, 
the delicacy of all the fabrics and the materials, of course the houses, because whenever there's great clothing and a great house, I'm totally in love. And then I also specifically remember loving that pale blue color that's running throughout it. It's my, one of my favorite colors still. And then that soft pink and all the light textures and the kind of semi-transparent fabrics. And the more I learn about my personal style, and since I did that body typing video, and I was told by Rachel that there should be an ethereal element brought in, the more I'm understanding why I love those things. And that classic with the ethereal blended is something that I love and I've been chasing kind of throughout the years. And now I know how to tangibly incorporate it. So dresses with blazers to give structure and then lace up boots forever and ever and ever will be a favorite. And I feel so influenced by that movie as a result. And for so many other reasons, I just love it. And there you have it. Those are some of my top style icons. They're people that have influenced my personal style tangibly and a little bit more abstract over the years. And I really, really loved making this video. It was so fun to sit down and actually put it all together. So I hope that you liked it. And I would love to know your style icons in the comments down below. Share as much as you want. So I'm, I guess, indirectly tagging everyone that's watching this video. And I hope to see more videos like this on YouTube because I just think it's such a fun exploration into your personal style. So like I said, I hope that you liked it. And like always, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Have a great day.